Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Holistic Back Health series. Today we will work on your core stability. Core stability doesn't mean that you have to have very strong um, six-pack abs. It rather means that um, you have to have the right activation of the right muscles. Um, and the good timing so that those muscles, those deeper muscles that secure the spine get activated um, very quick in order to secure your spine and other joints um, in your body. We will do a test now that will test just that. But what's important um, to understand is that even if you don't pass the test, that doesn't mean that you have a weak core and that that's the main cause of um, your back problems. Because there's a lot of people who um, have a weak core and they don't have any um, back problems. And on the other hand, there are people with a strong core um, and with good six-pack abs and good stability um, that do have back problems. Like I did um, half of my life. I had a pretty strong core and a um, decent core stability, but I still had um, back problems. But um, it can give us a good feedback that um, you might have um, good potential there for improvement so that we then work on your core stability. It is likely that it can help you secure your spine better in your everyday movements and in certain exercises. And it's also likely to therefore um, alleviate your pain. So let's start with a test now. For the following push-up test, you will need a stick, which can also be a broomstick. Lay on your belly, place the stick aligned with your spine on your back so that it's touching your head and your butt. And now place your hands right next to your shoulders and push yourself up so that your whole body lifts up as one. You pass this test if you're able to do that without the stick moving at all. You haven't passed the test if you lift your upper body up first so that the stick slips down in the back. Or you lift your hips up first so that the stick slips down over your head. This test is certainly also determined by the strength of your shoulders and therefore girls usually struggle more with this than guys. But if you can transfer the energy accurately through the core, all of the strength in your shoulders doesn't really mean anything. So let's now work on your core stability. With the first exercise, you wanna activate your abs in a back sparing way. So lay on your back, have one leg up and bent, and slide the stick underneath your lower back to create a little hole there. Try to keep that hole and place the stick behind your head now to support holding it up. Now you move your upper body up slightly until you feel your shoulder blades lose contact with the floor and your abs are really engaging. Hold that position for five seconds and repeat it three times before switching the legs and going again for three times. Give your abs a little break before moving on to the next exercise. And the next exercise then will be holding the plank position. So get into the position, have your hands on shoulder level and your spine in its natural position. So there is one line from your feet up to your head and your hands are pointing forward or slightly outward. Now focus on breathing in your belly and lower rib cage. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Try to avoid letting your hips sink either down or being too far up and if you're in doubt have somebody else checking your form. Hold that position for as long as you can without losing this form. If you can't hold yourself in that position on the floor, do it on a table, box or even against the wall if that's already challenging for you. The further you have the legs away from the support, the harder it will get. If you have wrist problems, try to change your grip and make sure you're mobilizing your hands beforehand. Now you go into the push-up position again, but this time you widen your stance so that you have more stability and you have your hips not going too far down or too far up, but in a position where your whole spine can be in its natural position. 
From here you lift one arm up slightly while trying to maintain a completely stable core. So make sure the hips don't move like this when you lift the hand up. Go for seven repetitions on each side and if it's too difficult and you feel that you're compensating too much in your core, just do this one also on a table or against a wall. But also in this position, make sure that the hips don't move at all when you lift up the hand. For the next exercise, you go on your knees and elbows, making sure there's a straight line from your knees to your shoulders and place your hands at the level of your forehead. Now you try to push yourself up on your hands while keeping the straight line from your knees to your shoulders. Again, make sure your hips don't stay too low or are too high and go for 7 to 10 repetitions or as many as you can still keep a good form. For your last exercise, you get into the regular push-up position again and from here, you let your body down on a count of four. So try to keep your whole body aligned and go down for four seconds before then pulling your heels to your butt and pushing yourself up on your knees. You then extend the knees and go again down for four seconds. Make sure you don't bring your shoulders down first. Or let your hips sink down on the way down at first. You want to maintain completely aligned all the way until you're on the floor. Go for seven repetitions or as long as your form still looks good. I hope you learned something new in this video and if you liked it then give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any further videos and if you have any questions then just leave a comment below this video and um, I'm very happy to answer them for you. So I hope to see you in the next video again. Bye.